Warframe has had 10 years to build a fantastical repertoire of cats, dogs, and floating robot sentinels, Boston Dynamics good boys, and infested abominations, but how should you be using them? Hi everyone, this is Jason from Realm Space Gaming, and today we're presenting a guide to understanding and modding companions in Warframe. Jumping right in, it's worth noting that there are three types of companions. There are sentinels, which are little flying robots that follow you about. There are cat and dog-like pets, such as Kubros, Kavats, Predecites, and Volpafires, and infested chargers, and finally there are robotic mowers and robotic hounds. I'm going to take a moment here to mention that Predecites, Volpafires, mowers, and hounds are all modular companions, which means that their stats can vary based on the parts they're made from, but the reason we're not grouping them all together is because the mods that they use are different. The game only really distinguishes between organic and robotic, but in reality there are three categories, which are organic, robotic, and sentinel, which is kind of in between. We're going to be going over each category of companion and giving a basic overview before listing our top pick. First, we're looking at sentinels, floating robot creatures that follow you around and help out. Sentinels are purpose-built, each with their own theme and purpose. The Shade, for example, is a sentinel that's well suited to stealth purposes, with the Ghost Precept which turns you invisible when enemies are nearby, and the Revenge Precept which will only allow the Shade to attack nearby enemies that have already attacked you, which will stop it from giving you away in missions where you're trying to be a bit more sneaky. Those precepts are specific to the Shade, but the Shade and all other Sentinels for that matter can also equip any mod in the Sentinel or Robotics category that's not specific to one of the Sentinels or Robots, and a limited selection of mods from the Companion category as well. Other Sentinels include the Death Cube, which is basically a floating machine gun, the Carrier, whose primary purpose is to crack open crates and transmute ammo to meet your needs and keep your weapons firing, and the Dirija, which is a sniper's best friend with a sniper of its own and a taser for enemies that get too close to you, or even the Helios, which will scan enemies with your codex scanners or use parts of its own body as a glaive. Each Sentinel comes with its own weapon, but most of them are also interchangeable. Even though each sentinel has its own purpose, our top recommendation for sentinels is the Oxalus, as it provides invaluable utility for farming resources on open world maps. The Oxalus has the scan aquatic life forms and scan matter precepts, which allow it to highlight nearby resource containers and scan for fishing spots on the plains of Eidolon or Valus or on Deimos, as well as highlighting the fish and making them easier to catch. The Botanist mod, purchasable from Cephalon Samaris, scans plants for crafting materials, making your farming process much more efficient as these can be a pain to collect otherwise. When it comes to modding sentinels, bear in mind that they are very squishy and unless you have a means of healing them or shielding them, they really can't take much enemy fire before being destroyed. That's right, destroyed, not revived. For this reason, be sure to try and mod them with additional health, armor, and shields, and slot on the regen mod so that your sentinel will have a second lease on life if it gets shot down. If you get really desperate for your sentinel in a mission, well, bear in mind that your sentinel also respawns when you do. Do with that what you will. If you plan to keep a sentinel alive long term, it can actually make more sense to not put a weapon on it, as this will draw enemy fire toward it. The most important ability you can put on any sentinel, however, is vacuum, as the game has a decent amount of grind to it, and sucking up mods and resources from a decent distance make all the difference in the world. Next we're looking at the pet category. Like Sentinels, each pet seems to specialize in an area which is its theme. Some popular Kubro breeds include the Huras, which focuses on stealth gameplay and can make you invisible much like the Shade can, the Raksa, with its ability to replenish your shields, and the Sahasa, which can dig up resources for you. Each breed of Kubro comes with its own set of unique mods, and they can also be equipped with mods from the Companion category. Kavats, on the other hand, are often seen as more versatile and powerful than their Kubro counterparts. The Smita Kavat is highly sought after for its charm ability, which provides random buffs, including a chance to double any resources picked up, grant you additional critical hit chance, or would simply create rare resources. The Adaza Kavat is also a popular choice for its more consistent critical hit chance and damage buff, which can benefit any Warframe and weapon combination. Infested companions like the Helmuth Charger and Deimos Predecites and Vulpafires are much rarer but can be effective when modded properly. The Helmuth Charger, for instance, is a durable and aggressive companion, capable of dealing decent damage and crowd-controlling enemies. Our top recommendation in the pet category is the Smita Kavat, as its charm ability is highly valuable, making it a great companion for players looking to maximize their loot and efficiency in missions. 
When modding your pets, prioritize health, armor, and shields to improve their survivability and consider slotting in mods like Link Health, Link Armor, and Link Shields, which scale based on your Warframe stats, so make sure to match them to your strengths. Be sure to also equip mods that enhance your pet's unique abilities, such as Bite for increased damage on Kubros or Sharpened Claws for armor stripping on Kavats, and always take Fetch, it's vacuum, but for pets. Now onto robots. The most common type is the mower. You can acquire mower parts and blueprints from Fortuna and assemble your very own mower companion. While mowers might not have the same raw power as some of the pets or the utility of the sentinels, they offer a mix of unique combat and support abilities that can be tailored to suit your playstyle. Examples include the Lambio, which comes with a protective stasis field, or the Nykus, which can knock down enemies and get all up in their faces. Once you've built a mower, you can put its abilities on other mower too, so you've got a lot of freedom to work with once you've got them all. Our top mower recommendation was a tough pick as they're all a lot of fun to use, but in the end the most fun came from the Olero, whose tractor beam keeps you up in the air for longer while aim gliding, which feels a lot cooler than it sounds. Modding mowers follows a similar approach to other companions, which is that survivability is key. Mods like Link Health, Link Armor, and Link Shields work nicely depending on your frame, and you'll want to consider the potential of set mods such as synth mods. Also fitting into this robot category, however, are the quadrupeds you can acquire by defeating the Sisters of Parvos, which are basically corpus liches if you're familiar with the Grenier system. These quadruped companions, known as hounds, consist of various parts which, like mowers, determine their stats and abilities. The Bulra, for example, can mimic enemy Eximus auras, the Dorma can disarm enemies, and the Heck can keep them knocked down. Together they provide a blend of offensive, defensive, and utility capabilities. Hounds are arguably not as useful as Kavats, but their unique abilities are fun. Like mowers, their precepts are interchangeable once acquired. Our top hound recommendation is the Balra as it very much appears to just absorb Eximuses and the Auras really are a powerful boon to you and your allies. When modding hounds the approach is similar to other companions, with survivability being the priority. Equip your usual link mods to improve durability and focus on mods that utilize the environment such as coolant leak if you plan to be up close with enemies. We hope that this video helped you to understand Warframe's diverse range of companions quickly. If it did, drop a like and subscribe if you'd like us to keep covering Warframe, as we'll bring you the best guides that are quick and let you jump straight back into gaming. I also encourage you to check out our Discord server, where we're growing a passionate community of gamers and giving away some of the top titles. It's a place just to have fun, talk about your favorite games, and connect with the community here at Realm Space Gaming. My name is Jason, and here's a big thank you from everyone at Realm Space Gaming for watching, and don't forget to enjoy the rest of your day.